three men have been charged in the United States with an alleged $50 million online bank heist. Prosecutors say that a virus was used to infect more than a million computers worldwide, including ones at the US space agency NASA and steal people's bank details. It's thought to be one of the most financially destructive cyber crimes ever read. Well, Herb Lin is in Washington. He's the chief scientist for computer technology at the National Research Council now. These men are alleged to have made $50 million worth of profits. That's a staggering amount. How on earth did they do it? Uh, as far as I can tell, what they did it, they did it by being able to conduct their operations over a number of years on many accounts. So a little bit from many accounts extended over a long period of time adds up to a lot of money. Now, for people who bank online, this is really worrying. Uh, yes, I can understand that, and that means that you have to take precautions. People have to take precautions uh, against uh, being scammed like that. Well, what kind of precautions are we talking about? The kind of um, security uh, implement software that you can use, is that going to stop somebody who is so inclined, somebody who can break into NASA? Uh, well, the, there are certain kinds of software that you could buy, for example, antivirus programs that everybody should be able to, uh, to buy. They don't protect you against everything, uh, not by a long shot, but they certainly uh, help. They're much better than uh, nothing. Uh, so what happens is that if you buy these uh, kinds of software, they are uh, less effective uh, at the start because the first time that somebody attacks you, uh, nobody's seen it before and, and that kind of uh, uh, program looks to see whether or not any, anything bad has happened before. So, so the first victim is out of luck, but hopefully the uh, later victims, they, the software gets updated and then catches them. So having antivirus uh, and other protection mechanisms in place actually does make some difference. Uh, there are other things which in this case wouldn't have helped. For example, uh, it's not a good idea to use uh, Wi-Fi in, uh, in an airport, for example, uh, to do banking transactions. That's a, that's a particular particularly stupid kind of thing to do, and yet there are people who have done it. What about in terms of, because that's putting the onus on individuals, what about the banking community themselves? Prosecutors have said that this is a wake-up call. Well, it, yes, it's a wake-up call, but uh, people have been known to sleep through wake-up calls before, uh, and, and there has been a wake-up call uh, being sounded by those of us in the cyber community, cybersecurity community for many, many years now, at least 20, 20 years now of, of warnings that this sort of thing uh, can happen. Does the banking community have uh, any responsibility? Certainly they do, and they do, and they have taken some steps in order to uh, uh, to help you out uh, to improve your security. Uh, for example, some uh, banking, banking companies, some banks force you to only log in to certain computers, uh, will only accept a, uh, uh, a connection uh, to do online banking from a certain computer uh, without special permission or, or something like that. Does it, so that's a help. In this particular case, that wouldn't have helped against the, uh, the Gozi attack. Uh, but uh, th and there are other things that you, you, you can do, but that's just an example of something that's possible to help you. Okay, Herbling, good advice. Uh, Chief Scientist for Computer Technology at the National Council, Research Council, thank you.